Why do people think like there's not working men in California? We block out the fees over here. This is how we roll. <laughs> 1999. 1999. I had no airbag, right? Put the block of wood to, uh, to make up for where the airbag would be. And yeah, I just babied it home, drove it home that way. My vs. Everybody always compliments the vs. It's a really big vs. <laughs> I love it. What's up, guys? My name is Jake. I am a heavy equipment mechanic out of Long Beach, California. I'll be giving you a tour of the truck, uh, what's in it, kind of what I go through day to day, and just show you guys what a mechanic in uh, California looks like and how we get down out here. This truck tour is proudly produced by Tecamo and sponsored by Fortis HD. The truck is a 2013 Peterbilt with a certified truck bodies bed. Yeah, we've had the body since the company started 30, 35 years ago. So we swapped out many trucks over the years and just kept the body along with the auto crane. This thing is, is as old as us, it really is. So this thing has probably been with the truck as long as it, the bed has been around. It runs my air generator, all that shit. It's a great welder. I know my boss loves Miller. <laughs> I know he loves Miller, so it would never be a Lincoln or anything in there. Pretty much any company I've ever worked for, except for one, it's all been pretty much Miller. They've all pretty much leaned towards Miller. So drawer number one, I'm sure you guys all know, it's the miracle drawer, right? So it's where we got all of our stuff that we need for miracles, pretty much. Extra bolts, just generations of mechanics, you know, that have all put stuff in here that we, you know, save for later and cutting edge bolts are down at the bottom. So that drawer's a pain. So I won't even bother opening that one, but yeah, that's the miracle drawer. So anything, anytime I need a bolt or any kind of odd, odd and end type of thing or anything to get me out of trouble, I'll go in there. Filers here in this top one. Odds and ends like crow's foots. A lot of, I'll keep all the crow's foots in here. I know what I got in here. My filers, kind of off stuff. And there um, are screwdrivers, nut drivers for clamps, hose picks. I use these pretty regularly. Another miracle drawer. <laughs> Funny because I got so much shit in this drawer, and this is about all I use in it this this and my magnet so yeah again you know I'm, it's also kind of that thing too where you don't want to throw anything away because you're scared so this is my metric cabinet metric sockets wrenches wobbles my boss likes snap-on stuff um, a lot of this stuff is like i said again really really old so it's actually kind of cool to run into like a super old snap-on wrench or something here and there and you probably something that he bought back in the 70s or the 80s or something. This, you like my latch setup. So, too much to uh, replace them. So, this is what we do, homie. Uh, ratchet drawer, breaker bar, 3 8 long, snap on ratchets, another breaker bar. All my extensions are in here. This drawer would be our Allen's, Torx, any kind of the uh, off. The off stuff, uh, scrapers, which I, I do try to keep sharp. Allen's, Torx, I, I need to go through some of this stuff here. This is our standard socket drawer, odds and ends in here. Some adapters, yada yada, got our latch. This one here is uh, just another miracle drawer. I, again, I need something bad. This will usually pull me out of it. I got, I mean, I got seals for, days in here gaskets i mean so much stuff like it's it's helps dude i know it looks kind of but you never know like some of this stuff can really get you out of a pickle it's good to go through there that you see what you have to be honest i don't know what i have until i'm looking for something i need this is cabinet number two here i got all of my gasket makers my loctite tape measure that doesn't go in all the way, but it works. Filter wrenches is pretty much gonna be up here. This is my, pretty much my go-to, bro. Like, yeah, rigid. Yeah, I couldn't even say how old this thing is, dude. Like I said, it's a trip. Being in a truck that's had so many different guys in it, you come across some old shit, dude. So 
Yeah, up here is pretty much just filter wrench related stuff. Over here is where we'll have my bigger wrenches, two inches, two inches. All of our bigger sizes are gonna be here. So I'm dying in the sun, so we're gonna back the truck in to the shade here. Oh, much better. Yeah, this is much better. Pretty much anything plier related is gonna be in this drawer. Standard wrenches are going to be here. Everything, dude, is just the works. Anything you'll need. Again, I know what's in here. I know how it looks. Our bigger sockets here, cylinder reseal or something. It's usually when I'll get into using the bigger stuff. This is uh, drifts, punches, heel bars, adjustable wrenches, smaller pry bars, channel locks in here for some reason, a pipe wrench. Here we have pretty much our hammers. Pry bars, dead blow, more punches. Here is our pullers, anything puller related that I would need. To be honest with you, rarely ever use this drawer. And then here we have our impacts. This is our big one inch, our half inch snap-on, our little 3 8 air. And I use this one daily. It's just a Matco cordless 3 8 impact. And, uh, I don't know how old this thing is either, but I use it. It works great. What's the most common repair you do? For us, it seems to just be like, for me, like cylinders, stupid mistakes, you know? Like we had one a couple, uh, like two weeks ago, they ran it out of fuel. I was there on a Saturday to repair the machine. Couldn't get it started because it had no fuel in it and I had no fuel. And I had said that Saturday, if they call us Monday morning with a saying they got a burnt out starter, I'm gonna freaking. I'm gonna die of laughter. And then sure enough, Monday, like around 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, they called us saying that they burned up the starter because they were trying to prime the fuel. That was just operator error. So we have like a lot of stuff that's operator involved. Just maintain it. And that seems to me like it's getting to be like lost. Like it seems like nobody really does that. Once beer 30 comes around, everybody's just gone. But there's good operators that are out there lots of good ones matter of fact it's always fun when you get on those stop sites too operator that's smart and helpful and you know knows what they're doing double doors here is a little bit of everything we got our big sockets i think this one's four and three quarter this one's four four and a half i think the last time i used either of these would have been on a rod a rod end cylinder for a reseal seals here o-rings in here and this is like another little miracle kit for o-rings Grease, uh, Zerk fittings, anti-seize, light grease. I love, I use this all the time. And then all the aerosols, brake cleaners, your penetrating oils. There was one that he was buying that I really, really liked, but I don't remember the name of it. It was red, it looked like this, and it had a really like interesting smell. Like it had a real sweet smell to it. If you guys know what I was referring to, let me know. A big drawer here is going to be for just like hydraulics. Uh, anything in here is just going to be like adapters, JIC fittings, O-ring face fittings. This looks like it's, uh, again, something somebody that was in this truck before me made. Hook this up to your port of power and screw this in into your clogged up grease port to clear them up. This is a transducer someone made, right? I just, I was, I use this pretty, pretty often. So it uses the compressed air to create a vacuum in the tank that will allow you to remove a hose without having to drain the tank. You want to be careful with square shaped tanks, I believe, uh, because they can buckle. I've, I've never done it, but I've heard. These are uh, diapers. These are great. I get these from the girl over there at uh, the trash place that I always work at. She hooks me up with these. Lindsay, shout out Lindsay. She's cool. My vice, everybody always compliments the vice. It's a really big vice. <laughs> I love it. I don't know how old it is. It is a Wilton. I did break the base on it back in December. I had a tilt rod on a 966H, the nut for the piston on the rod end. They're kind of notorious for that because that, that cylinder gets worked so much on those loaders. Cranking up on it with the pry bar and the crane, tore my freaking vise right off of the back of the truck. Yeah. The dude was cool though, like he tried to weld it back on and stuff. So I learned a lesson there. I was so far away, dude. I was way out in the field. I didn't want to have to 
come all the way back, bring it to the shop to tear it down, and then go all the way back. I wanted to be able to get it done and finished with up there. My extra hose, my extra air hose, and I'll have like my chain bridle, all of my chains, lifting, eyes, anything to do with lifting is gonna be this drawer here. Our welding leads here. Gotta be careful where they end up because I start fires like that. There's some black corners here where that's happened, but I have had a buddy though, when I worked for a different company that parked his truck to walk into a Panda Express for lunch. It was a Chevy Silverado, like a 3500, just with like a, like a Harbor truck body on it. Some guys hopped in, they were able to get right in and the truck was still running. Actually, he left it running, but locked the door. And uh, yeah, they stole it. And we had it on the GPS, you know, cause the, my boss kept the GPS on it. So we're like following it around all over like Compton and stuff. And they ended up having to have the helicopter come out and try and find the guy. It was, yeah, it was, it was a big ordeal. We did get the truck back, you know, having the GPS on it is pretty much what saved us, you know? So one of our other coworkers is like an ex Marine and shit. So like, he was all like gung ho about following the guy and trying to get the truck back in one piece and everything. So. This is for, you know, my outriggers. This was actually a pretty cool piece of equipment that they use to pile dry shoring in called an ABI. It's just something good to have all of my blocks of wood in here, my solvent bucket, all my buckets of oil. So the top three are engine oil. Oil recovery for me is basically just, if I'm gonna drain oil in a machine, I'm gonna be using these buckets here. It sucks, you know, we have a, we do have one for the shop that's a pump, pretty old school, you know, but it's how I've always, I've never had a service truck that uh, was plumbed up. Actually, no, I had one service truck that was plumbed up for, um, I, did, I had a fresh clean engine oil and the pump on it. Yeah, besides that, I've always just used buckets, dude. Got my diesel in here for doing services and, and whatnot. Freon for AC chains. You know, and then this is a pump, actually, air actuated pump, shovels, bigger pry bars, my uh, floor jack. There's a bag of O-rings in here, dude. That's light. Check out this bag of O-rings, homie. Tell me you ain't got O-rings like this, bro. Look at that shit. O-rings for days, dude. So this is actually come in handy many a time. My ladder little giant or whatever and then cardboard every mechanic has cardboard right so i've even got some plastic again working in some of those sites especially by the beach and stuff they can be yeah, really picky you have multi-million dollar homes and driveways and stuff that these machines are going across and stuff and working near so i've had uh, people come and uh, scream and yell at me for something I hadn't, I couldn't control. Yeah, like, you know, an oil, you know, machine leaking oil is gonna leak until I fix it, you know? So yeah, that's just people being people and it's something you have to deal with. So here's uh, straps and lifting straps come along. Old Faithful right here. Sandwich blade here for again, cylinder rods. Crane is a auto crane. These are really popular common cranes. Again, this thing is probably very old, probably as old as us. Yeah, it's an 8,000 pound crane. Got the remote. Really no complaints, dude. It's a great, I'm, I'm amazed at how, how well it, it still runs. Crane is the best, best part of their truck. William will beg to differ when you go and see his truck. This truck is 35,000 pounds, air brakes, all of that. So it's just, it's overkill. I, I would much rather be in like a 5,500 with like a 7,000 pound crane. Then I don't have to worry about weight restrictions because that's something that I have. Can't just drive around like I was used to in a service truck, you know, and I had to learn that the hard way because I got a ticket for it twice, matter of fact, for driving on a street that I was too heavy to be on just because I didn't know. I, I was just, you know, not used to it is what I should say. Yeah, if it were up to me, I wish I was in a smaller truck for sure. Yeah, I forgot to mention the water back here. It's hooked up to, uh, I think it's a 20 gallon water tank underneath. It's good to have, and then the grease gun is hooked up to the air. The drum is actually right there behind the uh, Freon tank. So it's all plumbed up to run off of the truck. Yeah, it's nice because when you have those hand pump ones and you got to grease a whole machine or something, you know, it sucks. So having the, the air operated one is um, good. I see a lot of guys that have the electric ones too now, but a machine can take so much grease, you're constantly swapping out uh, tubes and, and whatnot with them. So this has a pretty big drum back there. It lasts me like six months or so.
could tell you a little story. See how it's worn in, how the truck, the bed worn into the tire here? Yeah. We were having some issues with the airbags on the, on the truck, issues with the level valve. Kept blowing these bags, dude, and it blew a bag. I was on my way home from a call. So this was basically, I could see in my rear view mirror, just freaking smoke, dude, from the freaking tire. Burnt rubber all along the back, the side of the truck. This was after hours, so I ended up having to get a block of wood, dude, from the back of my truck and went under there, strapped it with a ratchet strap, uh, the block of wood to, so basically, I had no airbag, right? Put the block of wood to uh, to make up for where the airbag would be, yeah. and yeah, just babied it home, drove it home that way. Yeah, it was boy, it was so bumpy, dude. <laughs> See, I had it sitting on the mounting plate where the airbag would mount to, and then the, the bottom of the frame rail, right? So, and then I ran a ratchet strap around that. If I hit a bump or something, it would kick out. So I kept having to pull over and make sure it was still there. But, and it's kind of cool too when you have breakdowns on your truck. The only time I've ever had to have like help is if it was a blown out tire. But other than that, like we're pretty capable of getting the truck going if something happens to us out there. Anyway, this is our uh, sideways drawer, the side drawer. We got our levers for our outriggers here. And this drawer is going to be pretty much pry bar, my sledgehammers. Yeah, this one I was using the other day. I had it like that and I was hitting with it and it freaking slid off at the end and smashed the shit out of my toe. So that was the final straw. I decided to uh, replace it after that. Hard hats, which may or may not use, you know, depending on who you ask, but they're there. A snap on, one inch breaker bar. Here is our, the welding drawer, more or less. My biggest pry bar in this cabinet. Got my oxygen and my acetylene tanks here. My welding mask, uh, some jumper cables, air arc set up. This little guy, I don't know who bought this, when or how long ago, but this Mac hacksaw tool is great, dude. I love it. Used it for just getting me out of pickles, dude. Like I replaced a radiator in a, in a 966H uh, loader a couple weeks ago. And, and again, it was over here at the trash dump. The, I had ended up having to cut a lot of the clamps because again, just that whatever they deal with, whatever they, the byproduct of what they, uh, what they get um, over there just wreaks havoc on anything steel. That's when that thing shines. When you can't get a cutoff wheel in there, you got too much surrounding it, like wires and, you know, you can stick that thing in there. And I'm glad it's on this truck because it's helped me out a lot. And we, uh, I try to keep all my tips clean uh, for my torch and whatnot. So anything that's gonna be tip related, <laughs> keeping your tip clean would be uh, in, in here. Welding rods, usually I'm 70, 18, eighth inch, I think it is, right? Or 330 seconds. Yeah, 70, 18 is usually what we're welding with or what I'm welding with. I like, 7014 better that's what i learned to weld on my grandpa uh fleet weld 47 is a, it's actually a lincoln rod needle gun right every welder's got to have a needle gun so we got a needle gun and then we got our little uh slag hammer here brazing rod gas welding rod is going to be in there as well again judge me on my work and how i get things done not off of how the truck looks. This is our electrical drawer. I tried to go through it a little bit, but again, man, I, I mean, I work 60 hours a freaking week. Oh, and I'm a single dad, so trying to get the extra time to go through this, but I did like, I did do this. I did that for you guys. I duct taped that. Fuses, electrical connectors will be in here. Heat shrink, power probe will be in here. I got a couple of them. I'll have, I got a shut off solenoid a switch in here. You know, I know this one's good, so. And then again, dude, like there's just stuff in here that's from guys that have been here in the past that thought I should save this. I like to save a lot of like plugs, temperature gun in here, some carbide bits, hole saw. We got our taps, helicoils, anything like drill related. All that stuff will be here. Got my cutoff wheel. Got our load tester, battery load tester. I got my coolant pressure tester in here, extension cord. This is another temperature gun. Dude, look how old this temperature gun is. 1999. 1999, dude. 24 years old. 
Look how big this thing is. But it still works, dude, so it's here. Uh, I got AC gauges right here as well. Scale for Freon. I don't do a whole lot of drilling, but got them. Yeah, there might be some filters in there. We've got a couple golf balls. So the golf balls, I, I don't know why they're there. And then this drawer here. Excuse me. Got a old rain suit that I don't need anymore. <laughs> More pipes, you know, adapters. Got a lot of brass in here. So mainly if I was coming into this drawer, it'd be to grab my air porta power pump. And that's usually what I'll come in here for. And my uh, cylinders, driving pins and moving pins, all of that. All of that happy shit. I really don't mess with anything up here. That's why it looks like it does. It's a good truck. This is the inside of the truck. Yeah, machine keys and whatnot will be in here. Markers, paint markers will be here. Again, Lindsay, thank you. She hooks me up with all of these, dude. Yeah, these gloves are great because you can wash them. Big on keeping my hands clean. I won't go into my truck after a job until I wash my hands. One of my biggest pet peeves is seeing guys that like finish a job and they get into their truck with their greasy, dirty hands, touching the steering wheel and stuff. And I've always been big on um, keeping my hands clean when I get in the truck, so. Hats, Blue Iron is a great customer of ours. Um, if you're in SoCal and you need electric work, hit up, uh, I forget how you say it, Ritz or Wright's Electric. That's my buddy, he's a really good guy. Steering wheel, my wallet. This is a replica of my late wife, actually. It looks just like her. Blue eyes and um, everything. She goes with me everywhere. Sticker here. Reminds me of my son and I. We got our safety glasses. Customer gave me these. These are pretty rad. Notepads, obviously, keeping track of the hours. Jacket, which I rarely use. More gloves. Extra set of coveralls. You always want to have an extra set of coveralls. Probably got an extra pair of Tonys in here somewhere. And an extra pair of pants. You always want to have an extra pair of socks. A beanie in your service truck is good too. Nuts. Baby wipes. Gotta have these, gotta have these. Umbrella, Walmart umbrella, that's good to have. Calendar, we block out the titties over here. It's just how we roll. <laughs> yeah, all the calendars will have blacked out uh, titties uh, in this shop. Just, just so you know. You hate titties, man. No, I don't hate titties. <laughs> no, I don't. We have, a, we have a cleaning lady that comes in. We try to be uh, respectful of her and, and just have so we, on, we just <laughs> yeah right yeah so we block all the titties that is the cab right there that's it dude okay yeah hope you liked it if you're a mechanic out there anywhere in the country anywhere in the world and you would like to film with these guys the Tecmo guys you can reach out to media at tecmohd.com. You know, it's good to get this kind of stuff out there, I think, especially for the younger generation and trying to get just this trade to keep it together, keep it from crumbling even more than it already has. The only way we're gonna do that is if more people jump on board. Iron sharpens iron. If you feel like it's something you want to do, that you're into, you don't have to be this or that. Like, just share what you know and share what you do. Again, the guys are really cool. The experience for me was great. If you want to see more of uh, what I do, like I said, all that stuff will be on my Instagram, which is Jacob underscore Levi with three eyes. Thanks again for watching, and hopefully we'll do more. Want more truck tours? Comment below or reach out to media at techmohd.com. To support this channel, buy our merchandise at fortishd.com.